Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by Rich Lewis. Rich is an author, speaker, and a coach who focuses on centering prayer as a means of inner transformation. Rich teaches centering prayer in his local and virtual community, as well as offering one-on-one coaching. So we're going to be talking to him about what it means to center prayer, as well as his book and anything else he would like to talk about. Rich, thank you so much for joining me today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit of background about yourself? Sure. Um, Again, my name is Rich Lewis. I I guess the best way to describe is I I have a uh, site that's about four years old now devoted to centering prayer. So we'll talk about what that is, but it's um, my site is devoted to centering prayer. I'll just say what it is. So it's centering prayer is two things. It is meditation and it is a practice that opens us up to God, uh, to the presence and actions of God within. So my website really is devoted to sharing um, centering prayer and how, you know, how it has healed and transformed me since I've been practicing it with others. So the, the whole site is really devoted to centering prayer, how it can help people I have a, a free ebook on it, and then I have a, my own book that came out about a that came out just over a year ago. Um, for those that want to further explore it, and, then I, and I have a weekly meditation that comes off my site each Monday, which shares you know centering prayer and helping people with with centering prayer. So that so that's a little bit about me in terms of uh, who I am and and what what I'm doing doing right now. How did you get started on this journey? What what made you get started on this and to start sharing it with others? Sure. Um, I, I had always been attracted to silence, just didn't know what to do in this silence. So I, I had read books by a gentleman by the name of Carl McCullman in 2011, 2012, and he talked a lot about silence and how powerful and transforming it was. I don't remember him mentioning, mentioning a practice um, I've since learned he does practice centering prayer. So I would just sit in silence. And, and at that time, it was brutal, but I would do it and, and persist and do it for one, two, three, four, five minutes. But then I just happened to be perusing Amazon in late 2013, looking for a book to read. And I came across a book called Healing the Divide, Recovering Christianity's Mystic Roots by a gentleman by the name of Amos Smith. And in his, in his book, um, he talked about centering prayer, which was a practice he had been doing for about 15 years up until that point. So that immediately intrigued me. So I began, I obviously continued reading his book. I began exploring centering prayer, reading other books on centering prayer. Uh, I reached out to him and we began a back and forth email dialogue. And, and since then, you know, have, have become friends and continue to talk at least once a month, actually, you know, via, via phone call. So that's how I, I stumbled across centering prayer. I probably shouldn't say I stumbled it. it God probably nudged it, nudged it into my life. But I discovered Center in Prayer in, I guess, about December of 2013, and then began seriously practicing it, jumped jumped in the Center in Prayer swimming pool, you could say, in June of 2014, and decided to practice it twice a day as much as possible for 20 minutes each sit, and continuing, you know, learning more and, and practicing it, and, and then from that point, uh, things just, I let it evolve, and, and it's evolved into my website and my book and and teaching and talking in the community a lot of virtual link at this point not actually going in the communities as we're in covid and even coming out of it but talking in front of a lot of groups via via zoom so that's and that's really how I discovered Center in Prayer. It was uh, founded in a book that I was simply looking for because I wanted to read something I wanted to find my next book to read and and it jumped out at me in, in the book I found well 
for those who are interested in centering prayer, let's talk about how you start a centering prayer practice. Tell us maybe the steps or the process. Sure, sure. And why don't I first tell people what it is, and then I'll tell them how you start it. Um, so centering prayer um, is, as I said earlier, two things, meditation and a relationship with God. And Centering Prayer was created by actually three Trappist monks in the early 1970s. They saw transcendental meditation happening, and they wanted something for the Christian community. So um, one of the priests, Father William Manager, I guess, discovered the method in a kind of an old classic book called The Cloud of Unknowing. So Centering Prayer has been around for about 50 years now. And the practice itself is you sit silent, you sit comfortably with your eyes closed to begin your uh, silent prayer time. Again, it's wordless prayer. You're not doing any talking. To begin your silent sit, you introduce what we call a sacred word. And it's usually one or two syllables. It could be ocean, a color, the beach, Jesus, God. Uh, You pick some type of word like that of, of short syllables. And then you start your prayer that way, and then you're consenting to the presence and actions of God within. And then whenever you begin engaging your thoughts, and what I mean by that is if you begin thinking about all the things you did before you sat down to sit, or you begin thinking about what you're going to do when you get up from your sit, you realize you're no longer sitting with yourself, with with God, you're sitting with your thoughts and your planning and your plotting. So at that point, you reintroduce the sacred word interiorly to let go of your engaged thoughts and to bring yourself back to the present moment and sitting with God. And then you let go of the sacred word and you do that whenever needed during the time that you've chosen to sit. So that's, that's how you do, how you do the practice. And that's a little bit about the history of the practice and how long it's been around. Well, how often should a person practice centering prayer? So, and, and yeah, let me actually come back to your question. So how does one begin, begin a, a practice? So I, I would say the first thing to do is just take baby steps. Um, so I would first make it the first thing you do. A lot of people want to know, when should I do it? So I would highly suggest it's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning. And, and my first sit, that's exactly when I do it. So make it the first thing you do as you begin your day. And, and if the idea of sitting for 20 minutes seems daunting, you don't need to start with 20 minutes. Try one minute or two minutes or five minutes and then work your way up. Um, so once you, you feel comfortable with one, two, three, four, five minutes, slowly increase your time. And then after perhaps a month or so, if, if you're, you're at 20 minutes, then add a second sit. And that could be at any, you know, any point during the day. It could be after lunch, before lunch. It could be before dinner. You, you kind of figure out what it makes the most sense for you. And then to take the same process, take baby steps with that sit as well, you know, starting with a few minutes and slowly working your way up. So I would just encourage people just to be kind and gentle with yourself, take baby steps and the first sit, make it the first thing you do before you begin your day. This next question is a two-part question. The first part of the question is, what are the benefits of centering prayer? Sure. So um, we, we sit with God simply because we, we trust God and we, we want to trust God during this process. We want to let go of, of ourselves and, and our planning and plotting and our thoughts you seem to notice the benefits outside of, of or you not seem, that's when you notice the benefits of the prayer. So I, I've been practicing centering prayer since June of 2014. So when I look back at who I was and how I felt prior to centering prayer and compare it to after centering prayer, the benefits I've seen are called the fruits of the practice, which really are, are God and gracing me with, with these gifts are just, you know, more inner peace and calm. Uh, I'm a less reactive person. And what I mean by that is I think I'm more willing to listen to people instead of jumping right into a reactive mode and, and arguing or disagreeing with someone. I'm a more confident person in myself. Uh, I seem to get inner nudges to try and do new things and get out of my comfort zone. 
Um, I seem to get inner, you know, wisdom for tasks that seem to elude me that, that pop into my head in the middle of the day on tasks that I just didn't know how I was going to do. And, and the solution, you know, seems to pop into my head. So those are some of the fruits that, that I've noticed. And, and they're really God gracing me with these fruits. God knows you know, what I need and, and, and when I need them. So the, the benefits, or we'll call them the fruits, are, are really unique for each practitioner. So if you, each person you speak to might tell you something slightly different or a whole lot different from, from what I just told you. Well, you just answered my second part of the question, which is what happens through a session of Centering Prayer. So let's talk about your ebook and your regular book you got out, Sitting With God. Why did you decide to write Sitting With God and tell us what it's about? Sure. So um, Sitting With God been out, came out in August of last year. Um, Amos Smith actually prompted me to write the book. I had mentioned earlier that I had discovered Centering Prayer in his book that he wrote and that I started reading in late 2013. Um, he and I be, really became friends, and he actually was the one that reached he reached out to me at one point in, I think it was about May or so of 2014, and said, I think you ought to consider writing a book. And at the time, I thought he was, I thought it was crazy because I, I'd never written anything more than six or seven pages in school. Um, but I asked him, well, how do I do that? How do I approach that? And he said, just take a week or so and just think of... Uh, write down single sentence statements of what does centering prayer mean to you? So, so I did that. And then I came back to him in about two weeks with an email saying, you know, here are 13 or 14 single sentence statements as, as I think about centering prayer. And he said, terrific. There's the chapters of your book. Go write. Well, I, I wasn't going to just go off and write 13 or 14 chapters. So I picked one of them, one of the sentences, took a couple weeks and, and wrote a chapter and then emailed him the chapter. And to my surprise, when he, he read it, he thought it was fresh, unique, and he thought there was something there. So, so at that point, I was then convinced that, well, maybe I really can do this. So I spoke to my wife and, and said, Would you, what do you think of me writing, writing a book? And she said, you know, do it, go for it. And at the time, I didn't, I didn't want to take time away from the family and, and my kids. So I decided I, was, I would write the book mostly on Saturday mornings at the local Starbucks. So I actually got disciplined myself to get up at about 5.30, drive over to the local Starbucks, get a cup of coffee, and then from about 6 to 9 or 6 to 10 in the morning, wrote, wrote the book. So that's, that's how the book got written, and it was really Amos Smith who encouraged me to write the book. Well, I know you kind of briefly touched on it earlier, but tell us about your ebook. Tell us the name of it and what people can expect when reading it, as well as about your website. Sure. So the, the free ebook on my site is, is meant to help people that really don't know anything about centering prayer. So it, it's a free ebook. It's about 12 pages. It's a, a 12 page PDF, and it really answers questions. Um, the top of it would be, you know, what is centering prayer? And, and it'll answer the question and it'll, and it'll talk about when should you practice and what happens during centering prayer um, and what are the fruits of the practice and, and what are some, some next steps. So it's really just meant to be something that someone can quickly read and become familiar with centering prayers and, and, and perhaps try centering prayer. So it's a, a free gift I give to people as they subscribe to my website. Are there any projects that you're currently working on or upcoming projects that people need to know about? Um, I guess really what I'm spending a lot of my time now on is, is really getting the word out of regarding centering prayer. So I've been doing a lot of podcast interviews. Um, so that's one big thing I'm doing is just I'm, I'm probably on one to three podcasts a week at this point just to talk about centering prayer and share my book, as well as answer the, the, the host's questions because in terms of how what I do can help their community. Um, so that's one thing I'm doing. I'm also doing a lot of uh, guest speaking in front of either church groups or centering prayer groups or book study groups. 
I'll get invited to different types of groups, whether it's a church, a book study. Uh, I've talked in front of spiritual directors. So I'm doing guest speaking in, in front of large and small groups. So a lot of my time right now is on podcasts and, and guest speaking in, in front of groups. Or throw out your contact information so people can connect with your social media, website, all that good stuff. Sure. The, be- the best way to do it would be just to come to my website. So it's, it's silenceteaches.com is, is the best place to find me because there they'll, they'll see, they'll find me, they'll find the free ebook. I have a invite me to speak page for those that want me to, or, or, or interested in learning more about inviting me to speak. Um, I do coaching one-on-one coaching for, uh, as well. So that I have that page and then I have about the books uh, page as well. So the best place to connect with me is, is silenceteaches.com and my social media. You know, for those that want to follow me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, I, I have my, you know, the, the social media links right at my website. Do you have any final thoughts before we close it out? Um, I, I guess I would just suggest that People, the try centering prayer, you know, they, people think of prayer as verbal prayer, talking to God. And I would just encourage people to uh, approach it that, that this is a different way to pray, where you're sitting with God and you're letting God pray in you. So I would encourage people to not give up their other ways of praying, but just to try a different way of, of praying where you're, you're sitting with God and, and you're letting God pray and, and act in you. And then just take baby steps with it, as I mentioned earlier. Don't feel that you have to jump into a 20-minute or 30-minute sit. Just start slow and work your way up to longer and longer sits. Ladies and gentlemen, go to silenceteachers.com to keep up with Rich and learn about Centering Prayer. Also, be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible that, that can learn about Centering Prayer. Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. Rich Lewis, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me on. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream. Dream.